Hi, it's Nicole Brandon with Unlimited Life. Welcome to today's show. Today we have a really special, extraordinary episode for you today. Today we are stepping off the beaten path. And as we talk about leading and living an unlimited life, that means infinite possibilities. Infinite possibilities are at your fingertips. When I met Jody Myers, I was absolutely enchanted because one of my favorite questions to ask people when I meet them is the did you know? Did you know when you were six or seven years old that you were going to be an astronaut, a firefighter, a dancer, an author, a professor, a research, whatever that is that that person is sharing their gift with the world, the did you know when you were little? Did you have a clue and inkling? Is that who you were? Is that what came out? And I'm always amazed when people say, no, (laughs) I thought I was going to be X, Y, Z and something happened in my life. Or I woke to the fact that I had this incredible talent or this natural ability I had, I never realized was something that the world would want and need and absolutely be hungry for and something that could change people's lives at such a global level that it would make an impact and an etch in humanity and change our lives forever. I always love those stories. Those are the hero's journey stories. They're the ones that we read about in books. They're the ones that for our lifetime, those are the stories we remember forever. And Jody Myers does something that I just think, if you could have a parallel life and you could be many things, like I always thought I would love to be a ballerina and a mermaid and Miss America and a whole bunch of things all at once, it would be great to be Jody Myers because what she does is she is a filmmaker and she films childbirth. That's right, she films childbirth. She actually films those moments when the baby is being born and coming into the world. She starts the movies just a little prior to that and can continue the movie on into the first few years of their life. But she is there in that moment that life is being born. She is documenting that moment, the joy when somebody first holds their child. There are no words when you ask people to explain that joy, but you see it on film. You see love in a way you can never put into words, but boy, do you know it's love. Boy, do you know it's happiness. Boy, do you know it's light. It's the most magical, mystical, marvelous thing that you could possibly ever share with the world, life being born. And she has used her artistic talent, her gift for filmmaking to be able to film these babies coming to life, these mothers and fathers receiving their children for the very first time and what that is like. And I am just so excited to dive into her mind, her world, her gift, and her talent, and to share with you today's extraordinary guest, Jody Myers. Jody, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me, Nicole. What an intro. Wow, you got me a little oh. emotional there when you talked about my dad. <laughs> oh, it's so beautiful. So I guess I would love to start there because one of my favorite questions to ask is when you were little, when you were five or six or seven or eight, and, you know, girls want to grow up to be Miss America or actresses or teachers or moms or whatever that is, astronauts, now they can't even be president. Was there something inside of you that always enjoyed the visual aspect, like when you watch butterflies or when you watch children play, or was there something in you that enjoyed the joy of life or the watching the joy of life? You know, that's that's actually a good question because when I was going through film school, so many of my fellow students were filming of, of dreaming of being filmmakers since they were little, since they saw E.T. for the first time or Star Wars, and that was never part of my vision. Um, 
I went through the phase of wanting to be uh, Dr. Doolittle. I wanted to talk with animals. I went through the phase of wanting to be an air stewardess. Um, and then the one thing that I was drawn to, I remember uh, friends of my parents had this humongous collection of National Geographic magazines, and I wasn't even able to read that kind of English at the time, growing up in Israel in particular. Um, but I would remember that in the afternoon when we would hang out at their house because we'd go there for the weekend, I would sit in the one room and just pull out these magazines and flip through them and looking at these kids in different countries and saying, I want to visit them, I want to eat that, I want to go there, and just all about the pictures for me and never thinking that one day I'd want to become a filmmaker and then eventually even get to work for National Geographic. But, um, yeah, my dreams were never focused on one particular thing, but then it did move into, I knew that it would have to be something creative. I did know that. I knew that it wouldn't be able to just be a nine to five job behind a desk. It would have to be something that I'm creating. And I started out with learning photography and then from that, um, wanting to be a photojournalist and then I got really disillusioned about what that whole world was about when I saw how manipulative it could be and then I went uh, to community college, St. Pete, uh, then it was junior college, now it's a college, and took any elective under the sun you could imagine. Um, I even took scuba diving there, and in my very last semester, I took an intro to film class, and that's when it all shifted, because I was already accepted to journalism school, but then I had to reshift and reapply, and that's what took me to film school. Wow, and why do you, you know, you say that photojournalism, you found manipulative, and it's an interesting word, and especially when I watch your work, which is glorious, by the way, and we're going to talk about your work. But one of the things that I would use if somebody said, okay, you have, you know, one minute, come up with as many words as you can to describe your work, there is such flow. There is such light. There is such beauty. There is such ease. And I think it's so far from you know, struggle or strife or manipulation or anything on the other side of that spectrum or scale. And so I imagine for somebody whose spirit and soul is as open as yours that anything that is not in in goodness or not in purity or not in integrity or not in wonderment would be a far cry from your soul's journey. Thank you. That's that's really beautiful for you to say that. And yeah, and what I found with the if I were to be a photojournalist, um, I wouldn't have control of what happens to my images, um, oftentimes. So and it particularly, I mean, it's a different topic, but particularly I noticed this when I was going to go that route. There were a lot of things going on in Israel, and I saw how photos and articles were very manipulative onto what people would believe, and I just didn't want to be a part of that. I still love taking pictures, but I didn't develop in that direction. And it's true. With my work, I get to edit it. Um, of course, even cinema and documentary making and what I do is edited. So you're getting maybe my view of it or my perspective or the way that I want you to see it. But at least I know that I'm making it in the way that I vision it. And it's not manipulated or changed or edited by somebody else. And I do give it a flow because this is something that these people, you know, the people that hire me to film their birth are going to watch over and over. So I want to make it something that they'll enjoy watching over and over. And that most of my work really does go into the editing. That's beautiful. That's so incredible. And so so now you found film. The very last minute of the last day. I love that you did scuba diving and all this other stuff in the meantime. It's yeah, so me fabulous. And then... Did it feel like home when you found film? It did. It did because, um, and I at first thought I was going to go the route of being a cinematographer. And very early on, I realized, whoa, that's carrying way too much heavy equipment and schlepping around stuff. And I figured, okay, that's really not going to be my thing. Um, I'm not a very strong upper body strong. So I, I just figured, oh, okay, I'm not into all the technical stuff. I'll pick a different route. So of course I did some directing and I did some writing and we, we get to try on everything. And at the end, I'm, I am filming and I am editing and I am, I guess, sort of directing my own projects, but in a much more minimalistic guerrilla style way. So I'm back to the, you know, the small handheld and, only later it actually kind of all clicked together that really my love for documenting things 
did stem from my father and even my younger brother, who was a photographer in Israel from almost from age nine. Um, and just being around them, watching them do their thing, and my brother had his little dark room on our balcony and process stuff, and I'd be his model. So the exposure to that format of um, creating has been around. And then also later I put the whole connect. My mom, she was... Um, she studied to be a nurse um, back in uh, in South Africa, and her direction was to become a nurse midwife. That's that was her dream, and of course she had you know she got married to my father. They moved to the United States. She had three kids, and she never really got to finish. She finished her studies, but she never got to specialize. And only years later in Israel, when we were a little bit older, she actually worked at the hospitals in a labor and delivery department. But only later, when I got into this career, did I actually know that her dream was to become a nurse midwife. So I feel like I've taken two of my parents' passions and put them together <laughs> without even knowing it. And I just wanted to share with you that you were saying about reading the National Geographic's magazines and that you didn't have, you know, the command or the grasp of the English language and so that you would look at the pictures. Your English is impeccable. It's well, thank you. We, we Thank you. We spoke English at home, so I did grow up speaking English, but from grade first, from first grade, I mean, and on, I studied in Hebrew. And then when I came back, I literally had to take, you know, basic grammar writing and stuff like that. But that's why I never developed an accent, because my parents did speak English at home with us. But it wasn't the kind of English that at age eight or seven I could sit and understand the whole National Geographic articles. It was all about the pictures for me. That's amazing. I mean, but it, it's just perfect. So I love that. And then I'm looking at the list of the networks that you worked for. And so you were drawn then into the documentary field. There was something in you that wanted to catalog humanity. Always. I, I when I went to film school, I when I came to the interview before I got accepted to film school, I said I not looking to work in features. I want to work on documentaries. And that again was because my thing was. I'm going to go travel the world and film. I didn't know what I was going to film. I didn't know where I was going to go, how I'm going to do it, but I wanted to involve my work in a way that would get me around to different places and tell stories. I never in a million years, though, thought that it would be focused on a childbirth. That really kind of came my way. That's so beautiful. And so you had a friend that said, Jody, hi. Um, I've got a really odd question to ask you, but we would love you to film our birth of our child and you said sure <laughs> basically something like that they're very dear friends of mine um i filmed their wedding uh and um she was at the time pregnant already and uh somewhere along the line probably halfway through her pregnancy they said hey would you want to film our birth and i said i don't even have a video camera so i ended up using theirs and actually buying the same one because i liked it so much it had night vision <laughs> There was a Sony that had night vision, and that was so useful because most of that birth was to candlelight. So I had, there were probably three or four candles in the room. And, and also knowing this couple, I knew it was going to be magical. I've never been to a birth in my life. I never knew that there was an option of having a home birth. Um, and all I knew of birth is, unfortunately, what most young women know of birth is what we see in the movies and on television. So I went with them to one of their, um, of course, I said, of course, I'll do it. I had no idea what that entails, but I said yes. And I went with them to one of the classes that they were taking with the midwives. So I have a better understanding of what it's like to be at a birth, what's expected. And um, the day that she went into labor, her parents were actually here from Israel. They're also an Israeli couple. And we all went to synagogue. I think it was either before a holiday or maybe it was Friday. I don't remember. So we went in the morning, and she was stepping out of the room once in a while. And um, we were invited by somebody to come to a concert in Topanga that night. So we all said, yeah, let's play it by ear. But it was going to start really late. It was going to start at 10 p.m. or something. And uh, we all went our own ways after that, went home. And at about 11 o'clock or something, I don't know if it was 9, 45, 10, I don't remember, uh, the husband called me. And he said, so you're ready? And I said, oh, I thought we're not going to this concert. And he says, Jody, are you ready? And I said, well, I could put my stuff together. Yeah, let's go. Why not? And he says, Jody, it's time. Maya's in labor. <laughs> oh, I just had no idea <laughs> that that's what he was talking about. And evidently, she was actually having contractions all morning, and that's why she was kind of walking out. She didn't want to scare anybody. She was just going out, doing a walk, doing her thing. But she was having very mild contractions throughout the day. 
And that night, um, I pulled my things together, went over to their place. I was the first one there for quite a while. And then they had another friend that came over to take pictures. And uh, the midwives showed up later. And only the next day in the morning, the baby was born. And I went and picked up her parents and brought them over. And it, uh, nothing like I've en- ever seen. It was really remarkable. And when you're filming a birth, how do you decide what to film? Like, how do you decide? Is it the love in each other's eyes as they look at each other? Is it the new life stepping into this world for the first time? Is it the the journey or the the, the agony to ecstasy? Or at, at what point do you say this is the story I want to tell? It's all of the above. I film all of what you said. Um, I actually sometimes, or most of the times, I'm the first one there because a lot really unfolds before the act of labor. So by being there and actually just having the couple, there's a lot of those beautiful, intimate moments. Yes, the connection between them, the conversation, maybe him feeding her something or rubbing her shoulders. Um, and then I'll walk out and give them some privacy, and then I'll come back in, and, and then the midwives show up, and maybe she's checked, or if it's at the hospital, then it's the checking in. Um, so it's all of those moments and everything in between, and obviously I'm not filming the whole thing. I'm not filming continuously. I could be at a birth anywhere from 6 to 20-something hours, but I always walk out with something between two and three and a half hours of footage. That's it. Um, I stop and start a lot. Um it's really just, you never know. There's moments that I could possibly miss as well. but um, And there's moments that I'll definitely not film that are just not necessary. And there's moments that I'm told not to film. <laughs> like, <laughs> if a mother gets an epidural, I'm always I'm always sent out of the room for that one. Um, yeah. It's, it's just it's so amazing to me. It's so interesting. And how have you changed? in the process of watching babies be born and new life being created as a person, as a filmmaker, as an artist? One of the biggest things, I think, um, is it completely changed my perspective on what childbirth could be like. And that's why I felt that my, and I'm so grateful at many of my clients, especially the ones that I early on started with because those were my friends of mine, um, allow me to share their birth because it's become such an amazing, amazing education tool and eye-opener for other women. Um, uh, I get so many comments on um, my YouTube channel, even more so than my website, about certain births. Um, and you could tell that it's such a awe for so many people. People have cha- changed their birth plan and what they intend on doing because they've seen some of these films. And in the past, it wasn't that available for people to watch. Now you can go to YouTube and Google Birth and there's going to be thousands and thousands of them. And usually it's just people filming their own. But um, I think what it's, it's educated me in a very deep way, and that's also the reason I decided to go take a doula course to learn and understand more from that perspective. And also following some of these kids as they grow up, um, because they're close relationships with me, it really gave me a different perspective on parenting and different styles of parenting. And women really trusting their bodies and following their intuitions more than doing what they're told to do just because that's what they do. So it it really taught me a lot about the human condition, about relationships, about patience, and really about letting go and letting things sometimes happen the way they need to. You can't be attached to the outcome because with birth, you just never know. You could be prepared as much as you want and do everything right and still be ready for surprises. And that's part of the journey such a beautiful answer and I know when I was looking on your website it's saying that you're really on call you're just like a doctor that you're on call from two weeks before the estimated due date until two weeks after and that you stay a little while after the baby's born and then you take all of these moments and you edit them and and put music to it and I mean it is it is such an art and a craft and at the same time you are Truly, I mean, that as important as the doctor and the family itself, that you were there on call waiting with bated breath for that moment that this little life arrives. That is absolutely true. And um, 
What makes it even a little bit more complicated for me is that I don't have a backup. So um, doctors have somebody that might be on call there or residents that are at the hospital. Midwives have backups. Doulas have backups. I don't. So for me, for instance, being sick is not an option. Um, being out of cell phone reception, going hiking in the hills, not an option. Leaving town, not an option. So when I'm on call, it's pretty much 24-7 until that baby's born. And um, and that's part of what I do. And as I was starting to do this, uh, I had no idea uh, what being on call means and what it takes and how to price something like this. It took me a while to even figure out that I really need to take a deposit um, before I uh, before I go to a birth. And uh, it was all uh, a, a process of learning, I should say. I mean, now women that are moving into this field, there's so so much information out there, and they have so many of us that they could reach out to, either um, birth photographers, which has become pretty popular, and a handful of birth videographers. So there's a community of support now, which is so great. And I randomly over the years would get an email or a phone call from people from Canada, Washington, D.C., that they want to start doing this, and is there any information? Could I guide them? Could I mentor them? And I, I love that now that there's actually a family of us that, that support each other. We have a Facebook group. There's even a new Facebook group now for um, birth videographers that are new, that they want to learn how to become or uh, get this and change what they're doing in, into this field. So it's kind of exciting because it's become so much more acceptable. I always would say I'm waiting for the day that people aren't going to ask me, you do what? And instead they'll ask me or ask people, so who's filming your birth? And then we'll know that we made the shift. <laughs> That's just its so beautiful. It really is. What an incredible concept. And you never think about that, that you can't go hiking or that you can't be, you know, out and about and out of cell phone reach and that. Oh, yeah, I've had to change plans. I've had to, I mean, I have a friend of mine that lives in my building, and oftentimes we'll go do things together, and sometimes it's totally across town. If I'm on call, we still have to take separate cars. Um, I've had to cancel trips. I've had to return from trips. Um, yeah, because sometimes I do get hired after I've already made plans. So then it's it's a little trickier. But uh, it's it's uh, once I get that call that the mother's in labor, it's just the whole shift. It's that's it. Everything else is gone and disappears, and I'm on my way. <laughs> it's really exciting. And I love the fact that you do the editing and add the music and your personal touches and the title and the credits because that, I mean, it's one thing to be filming, and it, it's such an art and a craft and something so genuinely unique that you're blessing these people with. But the fact that you have such a creative vision of the journey and that you are gifting them something that is a lifetime of beauty and memories just wrapped like in a bow, like the most beautiful present in the world, the fact that all of it you do. And so is that something when you started this, did you know that you were going to do it from start to finish and actually do the entire crafting of the film itself? Well, I had no plan, and like I said, in the first birth I filmed, I used my friend's camera, and I gave him the tapes, and I never saw it for three years. I never saw the, the footage, and then three years later, another friend asked me. At this point, I bought a camera already, and I did edit their birth, and I was using iMovie. I didn't have Final Cut Pro. I didn't even know how to use Final Cut Pro, <laughs> and um, I edited that on iMovie, and I was quite happy with the results, although it was way too long, so I ended up making a short version, and that's when I asked the first couple for their birth tapes so I could make them a version too and that's where I started playing with the editing because they showed it to the midwives and the midwives were wow we've never seen anything like this could we show it in our classes so one of the husbands made me a website and they told me you should print up some cards and let people know that you're doing this and I just was doing it for a few years on the side here and there and I was using i iMovie at the time and I think I used that program I don't remember if it was iMovie 3 or 2 or 4 but I used it to the max I was doing things that I didn't even know you could do with that. And then eventually I had to shift to something that gave me more flexibility and creativity. So I bought Final Cut Pro, learned how to use that slowly. A friend of mine bought me tutorials for my birthday. <laughs> and um, actually recently um, what I do have, I do still do most of the editing, but I actually have 
uh, had another woman that I work with who um, also edits for me. So if I have a couple that, for instance, can't afford my rate and they still really want to have it edited, um, I have somebody else do it, but under my supervision. I still meet with them. I still make the final changes and, and notes, but she does the editing and she does a great job. And she's already done a couple for me, and I hope to work with her more in the future because it's tough being in front of the computer for hours a day. And my my love is really the filming part, not so much the editing. Uh, so if I could do more filming and less editing, I'd still be happy with that. But it is fun picking the music and putting it together and making it work and tweaking it. It's very tedious, but um, it's definitely part of part of the craft. That's just phenomenal. It truly is. And you use the expression midwife and doula. And we may have some people that don't know what that is or what they are. Can you share what a doula is and what a midwife is? And are they the same sure. thing? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. So a midwife is a woman that's trained to actually deliver um, babies. They are they do everything. They do the prenatal checks. They follow a woman throughout her whole pregnancy, sometimes even while the woman is trying to get pregnant and all the way till after. And she's there for the whole birth. So you could think of it kind of like an OBGYN, but with a different approach. Um, Doulas are there for emotional support, physical support, educational support, but we do not deliver babies. We do not uh, catch the baby. We are not allowed to do checkups on the mother. Um, They are more like a support team. And uh, I think that I don't remember who the doctor was that said this, but there's some quote that a doctor said that if doulas were a drug, it would be unethical not to take it. Oh. And I and I honestly believe that every woman deserves to have a doula at her birth. Um, it's it's such and and it helps the partner as well. They're they're a fantastic things and they work wonderfully with with midwives and at the hospitals. They're such a great hand and it just makes a whole different experience. As a matter and of fact. Is that um, a- Career. I'm sorry for interrupting. Is that a career? Is there a training to become a doula? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And doulas do continuous education as well. Um, there are many amazing doulas in the Los Angeles area, um, and you could get trained for doulas, I'm sure, in almost every country. And it's become a lot more popular and more common now. Uh, it is a thing that a lot of people still don't know about, but more and more people do know about it. And I think there's even a couple of male doulas out there, which is quite incredible. <laughs> I've never met them in person, but I've I've heard and seen. I think one of those one of the blogs. It's typically a woman's job. That would be so much fun. It's funny. That's great. And then when you so if a doula is there to support, and you have your husband there, your as you're saying, your mother, your sisters, your friends, then can they just as easily film, or is it, you know? If somebody says, okay, like you're saying, people film their own home births, and, and why should somebody find somebody like you who's professional? So and who, I, I actually, um, I believe that everybody deserves and deserves to have their birth film if it's something they want. It's clearly not something for everybody, but I also think it's really important to choose who's filming your birth. So first of all, you don't always have a professional birth filmmaker near you. You might be living in a city or town where there's nobody in your area. So I actually created a really, um, I hope it's a funny, but a short um, video (laughs) blog, uh, my top 10 tips on how to film childbirth. And I created that for people that really want their birth filmed, but there's no one around there to do it, or they just can't afford it. And one of my biggest tips there is do not have your partner film it. Um, Many reasons. First of all, that means that they're not going to be part of the birth. There, once you put a camera between you and what you're filming, it's a natural barrier. Even if we're no longer holding it up to our face and we're maybe holding it at chest level and looking into a screen, we are now separated from what's going on and we're in our head and not in our heart. So that would be one reason. Second of all, the partner is part of the story. Him holding or her holding the baby for the first time, rubbing the mother's shoulders, whispering something in her ear, none of that is going to be captured if they're holding a camera. The other thing is they could be super nervous and 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 miss all the magical moments, drop the camera, <laughs> pass out. You never know how somebody's going to be at a birth. Um, they've not done this before usually. Um, you, If you're going to choose someone that's not your partner, I would say uh, be selective about that too. Not somebody that's going to be super chatty and that's going to talk throughout the filming 
or or somebody that will get overly emotional because if I get emotional when I'm filming, believe me, the loudest thing you're going to hear is my sniffing because I'm the closest to the camera. So it's it's a it's a certain energy you're bringing to a birth as well, and um, the results are going to look different. Um, when I was talking about all the births that you could see on Facebook. I mean, not sorry, not on Facebook, on YouTube. YouTube. Um, usually they're either uh, a tripod with a camera, just filming it from one angle the whole time. There's a lot of times there's light issues, focus issues, or movement. It's not um, it's not going to be done professionally. It's kind of like having your husband film your wedding or some major event like that. It's a completely different, completely different result. But I still believe that if you have no other choice and you still want your birth filmed, have somebody do it for you, even if it's not professional. Because once that moment and that day is over, it's over. There's no way to capture it again except for what you have in your memory. And I was just thinking the other day when I was t- thinking about this interview and what we're going to talk about, I was thinking, wow, you know, I wonder what some of the kids, that I, the babies that I filmed, what they're going to be one day. What if one of them is president of the United States? And there's actually a movie of the day that they arrived on this planet. I mean, how cool is that? Or thinking, imagine, you know, even though my father's been filming us since we were babies and since before I was walking, I would have loved, I don't know what I would have given to see the face on my parents when they saw me for the first time, when they held me for the first time. Um, just, and I could, I could imagine that would be amazing for anyone to witness that. So this is a generation of children that are growing up that will actually have that. And it becomes their favorite movie. From, from age three is usually when the parents start sharing it with them. And it replaces Barney. They want to watch it again and again and again. And then at their next birthday, and I'm sure that once they start hitting puberty, that might change. And then maybe when they're in their 20s, they'll start wanting to see it again too. But it's they're fascinated by it. It's the day that this loving relationship brought them into the world. That's, I mean, it's so special. I, it truly is. I just can't think of something more special to be able to offer. And then I was equally as moved, if that's a way to say it, by your early childhood years. You have videos of kids and their relationships as they're bonding and growing with their parents and into the relationship with their parents that are so intimate. And I think I was sharing with you that I was amazed because it wasn't like they were even looking at you or even aware that you were filming. It was almost like you had cameras in their house because the moments were that dear and that precious and that intimate between the parents and the children that you just felt like you were a a lawyer watching it. And I... If I was thinking as I was watching some of your early childhood movies as well that if I was a filmmaker, if I was a, a major director, if I was, you know, a Steven Spielberg and Oliver Stone or whatever, that these are actually the movies I'd want to see because this is as true to life as anything I've ever seen. And if I was a writer, I would want to write these moments. This is actually what I would want to incorporate into a feature film or into something that shares what humanity is or what life is or something because I don't think I've been as moved or as touched watching anything as I have by watching your early year films. Wow, thank you so much. That 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 moves me that you say that. Um and and none of it is really um directed, but I have to it, I mean obviously say this, in editing I would take out things that would make it look I mean obviously kids are so aware now of cameras from a very young age because they have their parents' iPhone or smartphone and they're constantly posing and filming themselves. So, of course, there's going to be plenty of moments throughout the day that I'm filming that, yeah, they're totally going to be looking my way and even talking to me. Um, But that's edited out. (laughs) So a lot of the magic is done in the editing. And that's why it's really great when you um, develop a relationship so that they feel comfortable around you and don't feel like they're acting out um, for that. And I... I could imagine that at certain ages it might be a little more challenging. That's why it's really fun to get them when they're young. And they change so much when they're young, too. So capturing those different times of their lives is is pretty precious. And um, I know that one of the films that you really liked was Alex and Juno, and she's a friend of mine. Yeah. Uh That was my first one, actually. The Family Moments, that's the first one I filmed. Well, 
actually, I'm sorry, I take it back. It's the second one. It's the first one I filmed on my new camera at the time, which is um, uh, I I use um, a Panasonic for that one. So it's more of a DSLR versus video camera. And um, what I loved about that one is um, Alex is a single mom, um, and she told me after the film was made that she doesn't have all these moments of her and her daughter together because if there is anything, she's the one taking the pictures or filming it. So being able to get that for her and having those moments of just the mundane daily moments of their life filmed, it, it was just precious for me to see but also for them to have. And um, even if, of course, there is a husband involved and a wife, it's usually the, what I hear from parents as well. Everybody thinks I'm a single mom or a single dad because the other is never in the filming. One of them is usually the one that takes hold of the camera, and then the other one doesn't show up, so there's not those moments from an outsider's point of view. And I could say that was the same. Well, actually, no. I actually have to say that when my father was filming with 8mm, he actually handed my mom the camera over quite a bit because my mom got some great moments of me and my dad and my brothers and my dad. So we have it pretty even out, but we rarely, rarely have anything with the two of them. That's just, and the moments in there from the bath to the brushing of the hair to the cooking of the food to taking a nap to just walking. I mean, they're, they're just moments that are the moments of our life. Yeah, it was they're a magical the day. Thing, yes, of the, the how we live and the how we relate to one another and the who we are. And just perfect, or even just the family with the little boy. I mean, so cute. And I love watching little kids run and their joy and the discovery the first time that they see things and witness things and open their eyes and touch and taste things and experience and to have those moments. Yeah. Just. I agree. I agree. And there, and I really enjoy making those movies. They're so much fun. They're really so much fun. Because you're playing with these people at the same time, too. You're there hanging out with them. <laughs> and it's great. That's phenomenal. And then do you, you know, how does somebody find you? How does somebody, do people call you and say, Hi, Jody, you know, I, I just found out I'm pregnant and I want to have a baby in nine months. Or does somebody say, my baby's due next Friday? And it's I happened that way it would be and really that way. nice to have it filmed. Yes, I've had it all, all, always. Um, well, first of all, I have a, a Facebook business page. It's my birth movie. I have a website, my birth movie. Um, I also have a blog, and um, and uh, originally it was just a website. So, of course, pe- people would not typically find me randomly because nobody really knew that there is such an option of having your birth filmed. So, at the beginning, it was really word of mouth. And also, um, there's an amazing hypnobirthing teacher, and her name is Alicia Tambori. And uh, when we met and she saw my films, she became my number one fan. She's been showing my early films in her classes for years now. So she would always refer people to me. Um, and it started out like that. And then, of course, with social media became, becoming what it is today, it's so much easier to find me on the Internet. But I would get uh, calls that would be we just found out we're pregnant and we're considering having our birth filmed and it was either a referral. But when it started showing up that people said, you know, I wanted to have my birth filmed and I didn't know if there's anything like that out there, so I Googled and you're everywhere. You're the only one that I found. So I would get some of those as well. And um, I did have, I probably had, I, there's one particular birth I remember that I literally got a call on Friday morning um, I don't remember how they found out about me. I think they Googled and found me. And then he said, you know, my wife's due date is next week, but I, we feel it might happen earlier. And I told him, well, you know, I do take a deposit up front and we're going into the weekend. So if you guys are seriously considering hiring me, you need to go to the bank now because it's Friday. And when the deposit's in the bank, I'm going to be on call this weekend. Otherwise, I have plans. I had planned that whole weekend. So he went to the bank and he put a deposit in and he called me to let me know that. And I was on call. And the next day I got the call and I went there. <laughs> so it was literally the day before. We never met before. We never had more of a, you know, a lot. They, they knew that this is what they wanted. Um, but typically I do meet with a couple um, at least once, sometimes twice before. And we do build a little bit 
on that relationship and then we're in touch as it gets closer. Um, but I love it when people are just looking and, and, and this is something that they're seeking out and they actually find me. One of my clients found me on their midwife's website. Uh, she has me linked under, I guess, uh, related links or recommended links, and that's how they find me. So when I call to thank her for the referral, she says, oh, I didn't refer them. They must have found you on my website. So that was really exciting. That That's also a great way to get yourself out there is being uh, tied in and hooked into the community, uh, in the birth community. Um, there was an article about me a while back in the L.A. Times, and the funny thing is the people that reached out to me after that were people that wanted to do more uh, interviews. One of them was a, a Swedish, I can't remember if it was a Swedish or a Norwegian radio show, a guy. He's their correspondent out here in L.A., and he saw that in the L.A. Times, never heard anything about it before, and he was totally intrigued, and we did a phone interview the next day. Never heard it, don't know what we said, (laughs) what he translated, but that's because he saw me in the L.A. Times. So it's kind of random where it comes from. That's just awesome. I love that you're doing that. And then on the new, on the early years, how does somebody decide, okay, they're one, they're two, they're five? What is the best time and age and to make a childhood movie? Uh, I think, honestly, if people can, it would be wonderful to do it every year. Because from age one to two and then from age two to three and three to four, they're completely changing. Their vocabulary changes, their look changes, their interests change. Uh, first they're crawling, then they're walking, then they're running. So I think every age has its magic. Uh, I guess once you kind of maybe hit five and six, if you want, you could slow down a bit. (laughs) But um, I think for those early years, it's just great to have it all the time. Um, I have one client of mine. I'm actually going to be filming their second birth uh, this summer. And they've also had me come film the first birthday and the second birthday. And at the second birthday, they said to me, you know what? We're not going to wait for the third birthday. We want you to come in the middle and get family moments because a birthday is a completely different thing. There's people, there's cake, there's excitement, but it's not the intimate family moments. So now that they kind of saw the difference between the first and second birthday, they want me to come before the third birthday as well. And um, and filming a second birth when the first sibling is there is also pretty amazing. Seeing the siblings being a part of it, participating, um one of my one of my f- dear friends she's probably i don't know the third fourth or fifth birth that i filmed well i filmed her second and her last baby and the last baby that i filmed the two girls were there and uh the one the oldest girl she was like a 10 year old doula it's incredible she was taking care of her mom and rubbing her mom's shoulders and just being so quiet and so present and so gracious and and she was being a mommy at 10 years old. She was completely being, you know, a doula for her mom. It was beautiful. Um, the other one was bouncing all over the place. <laughs> 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 Different ages. <laughs> but it was it was really it was really beautiful to see that one. I haven't edited that one yet. I'll have to get around to that because it's really beautiful. That I love that. And I also love the moments with the pets. I mean, I thought those were so precious, just the moments with the kids, with the dogs, with the... <laughs> yes, I'm trying to think which one of them has pets. It's totally uh, skipping my mind right now. But there have been there have been births that I've been where the pet was present. Um, oh, there, yeah, wow, there was one that right after the birth, the father brought both the cats to smell the new baby. So I literally got footage. This is not a birth on my website, though, but the the daddy brought the two kittens to smell the baby, and they would sniff the baby's head and, and everything just to kind of introduce. There's a new smell in the house. There's a new being in the house. And um, he was, he, a couple of years later, I got an email from them that they were so happy that we got those cats in the film because since the cats have both passed away, um, they were older cats, and he he w- which was heartbreaking for him because he had them for probably 18 years, and he was just so happy that we held had those moments of the cats meeting their new newborn on film. Yeah, so it's it's uh yeah you never know what's going to happen at a birth. The humor that comes out sometimes, the things that come out of people's mouths, it's pretty funny. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> so much fun, and then you also have some other videos on your website as well. I do. Um, I filmed, um, you You were asking earlier the difference between a doula and a midwife. So there's actually a really short, great documentary about what a doula is. And it's called 
the seek um the the I think it's called the sacred ingredient colon doula um or doula the secret ingredient or something like that I forget but it's on the dona website dona stands for um doulas of um uh doulas of North America which is now actually an international organization um but it's a short documentary that they put together using a lot of my footage showing what a doula actually does and there's also there's a link to that on my website there's also this movement called sacred pregnancy and they have retreats and workshops and beautiful trainings throughout the United States and actually the world so when they had one of the trainings for birth professionals out here in Topanga um they hired me to film that and that was beautiful beautiful experience if anybody wants to know about that it really shows uh in in a beautiful way what that whole process is about and one of my recent projects that I'm super proud about is a four DVD series um by director and producer Sarah Kamraff it's called Happy Healthy Child and that is a holistic approach to pregnancy birth and babies and uh we were introduced by Gurmuk um from Golden Bridge Yoga and when she introduced the two of us we felt like we were basically each other's missing link because she was doing this amazing documentary and had uh, or DVD series which had probably over 30 world renowned birth professionals talking and missing the footage and I had the footage but not all the scientific and evidence based and research and interviews that she had so putting the two of them together created this incredible series and I think anyone that's considering being pregnant or pregnant right now or even right after having their baby should take a look at that and it's evidence based and it's a lot of uh, very recent research and it's pretty eye opening and it's full of information so there's also I think a link to that um on that same other stuff that I filmed <laughs> that's just it's amazing to me just the vast range and scope of your talent and your magic and your vision and how committed you are to this process, which is just amazing. And then I, I want to ask you and, and talk to you about something else that you've expanded into, which is your oils as well, because I know that there is something about even just working with the oils at the birth. That yeah, that you know, it, it all, it, oddly, I mean, not even oddly, it, it really all ties in. Um, yes. When I started to learn about the birth world and getting involved with all these birth professionals, just seeing their passion about their work and the change that they want to make in the world is inspiring to me. I'm, I'm not the only one out there making documentaries to help change this. I mean, there's Dr. Elliot Berlin who wants to reduce the, the um, rate of cesarean births in the United States, which is extremely high. And he's doing little documentaries, and, and he's going to be using some of my footage in that as well. And, and um, I mean, when, when uh, Ricky Lake came out with her movie, The Business of Being Born, that shifted so much of the way people perceive birth, not only in the United States, I'm sure in the world. And I think it opened the door to so many people, and even even to people like me, because birth suddenly became something that's totally okay to talk about and, and document and film. So it's it's all tied in. And I've taken, uh, even though I don't practice as a doula, I, I you know, I've, I've been hired by some friends to be their doula, but it's really not my focus because I could refer people out to so many amazing doulas that I know. And there's so few people that do what I do that I'd rather focus on that. But I constantly take different trainings to do with birth, postpartum. Uh, it's just such an amazing education, and I love learning. And then somehow along the line, I got exposed to essential oils. Not only do I see midwives and doulas use them at birth, but... Um, I started using them a couple of years ago myself, and it's completely changed my life. Um, I was saying earlier that for me, being sick is not an option when I'm on call. I would be the person that if I went into a room and there were sick people or one sick person, I'd go home and I was sick. So when I was introduced to using essential oils and started using them, I'm no longer afraid about being around sick people, giving them a hug, coming over and giving them some oils, because I know that they work, and it really boosted my immune system. So I... I'm not as nervous when I was on call that I might get sick. It's it's not even an issue for me anymore. And uh, when I started realizing how useful they are in my life, especially when I travel, because I love traveling, so I take them with me. I was traveling this summer for two months, and 
I was using them on strangers, on the airplane, um, a neighbor of my friend. And when I saw the impact it makes and how empowering it is for people to be able to handle these things immediately by themselves, I came back and I decided I'm going to start teaching this and more people need to know about it. So I do that as well. And it's just, it's all ties in. It's, it's a, it's, it's fun. It's fun because it also gets me in front of people. I'm usually sitting in front of my computer editing and I'm a people person, so it really gets me out there, and I love that. I'm actually teaching a class after this interview today. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, I would love, and we've talked about that, I would love to come work with you and learn all about the essential oils and then be able to come back and share with people about the class and the information. Oh, that'll be awesome. Thanks. I'm very much drawn to. And then I know we have some questions here, and one is about can you go into the hospital? I mean, can you go into the room with the people? Good question. So we are really, really lucky in Southern California. Um, I have never came into a situation where I was told not to film. Of course, I have uh, an agreement and a contract with my clients, and I make sure that they get the green light before they hire me. So they need to get that from their caregiver. Um, It's usually up to the doctor, and if the doctor says yes, the hospitals usually will go with that. But there's no hospital that I know of here that will not allow filming of birth, However, if a birth is either a planned cesarean or a cesarean birth, you know, by by just making a change in the way things are going, um, most hospitals will not let me in or let anyone photograph. However, I have to say that there were two hospitals that did, and um, one of them was in Whittier. I forget the name of the hospital, but it was thanks to the midwife. Uh, This was a birthing center birth that ended up being a surgical birth. It was not an emergency. It was a well well decision made by by everybody involved that this baby needed to come out with a cesarean and because the midwife um had hospital privileges and worked with the hospital which was literally across the street from her birthing center she said to the doctor she says listen this mother's dream of having her water birth at a birthing center has changed and taken away please don't take her dream away of having her birth documented and i think the way that she presented that and spoke with them, made them allow me in. And five minutes, literally, before she went for surgery, she's like, okay, scrub in, come up. And I got to film. That was the first cesarean birth I got to film. Um, And then there was another one of twins, which was at a hospital downtown, Good Samaritan Hospital, and they were awesome. They completely let me in and let me film it. And they even let me go to the NICU and film the babies there afterwards. So that was unusual. And I know from other birth photographers and a few birth filmmakers in the United States that many of them do run into issues and some hospitals don't allow it. So we're really fortunate here. And my my thing is this. If I was a parent having a baby, and this is just me personally, and I was told, no, you cannot have that filmed, I would probably make a decision there what I want to do because this is by far the most important moment of my life. And to be denied having that filmed for whatever reason, probably wouldn't sit right with me. So, but that's just, that's just me. <laughs> and, uh, you know, but we're lucky here. We really are that we could do that. But I always, always have them make sure they get a green light before we proceed. Attorney, I absolutely love your journey. And I love the bridge from being born and this amazing miracle of life to you sharing the most special, intimate, thoughtful, precious, beautiful moments that I've ever seen, and that you took this incredible gift that your father gave you in his joy of the film and this incredible dream that your mother, you know, had for so many years, and you've woven them like a tapestry to create this incredible, incredible, magical film essence and uh, historical value for people. It's just, it, it's truly just spectacular. And I am so impressed by you, by your grace, by just the ease in which you share this information and your passion and your compassion for the people you work with and the, the craft and the life itself. It's just when I met you, there's something just so beautiful about you as an energy. And it's funny when you were saying, I was thinking about every little thing that you were carrying and everything you do, everything has such beauty and intentionality to it. And looking at you, you can only imagine that you're filmed every single second 
of a film that have that same kind of beauty and intensity. So. Oh, thank you so much. And you know what's really amazing about a birth that I think a lot of people forget? It's not just a baby being born, it's a mommy and a daddy being born as well. Or two mommies or whatever, but, but there's, there's a bunch of births going on there and I actually get to see that. I get to see how a woman is shifting from not being a mom to being a mom and it's a very emotional on many levels especially for all the people involved but it's you also get to witness that falling in love that instant falling in love with that new creature you're always in love with them carrying them but when that baby comes out it's 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 seeing something that you can't even describe sometimes in words and that's why it's so great to capture that on film and if if there's one thing that I could recommend anyone to do women that are finding out that they're pregnant whether it's the first time or not I know that growing up, we're so exposed to what I was exposed, which is the screaming mommies at hospitals and cursing out the partner and you did this to me and, and drama, drama, drama. We get so much of that on television and we get so much on that in the media that I really, really, even for if, if it's for inspirational purposes only, go to my website and look at some of the births there. It really can open people's eyes to what birth could be and how beautiful it could be and how intimate and sacred it could be and uh i think i think it uh is an eye opener for a lot of people because we're not used to seeing it that way well just remarkable and i thank you so much for your graciousness and for your time and your wisdom and your knowledge and your gifts and your talents and for being here with us today and for all of those that are listening to this show and so moved and so eager to have Jody film the birth of your child or the early years or the special spectacular moments in your life is you are birthed as parents. You want to go to my birth movie dot com, mybirthmovie dot com and on Facebook, my birth movie, find Jody Myers and really gift yourself one of the most magical, beautiful, spectacular things that you can ever give to your life, which is the moment life is created. Nicole, thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me and for all your beautiful kind words. Oh, absolutely, and we look forward to having you back and hearing stories of all the people that are working with you, and it's just such a thrill and such a joy, and we wish you a wonderful day, and thank you again for being with us. Thank you so much. You all have a wonderful day, too. Thank you, too. There are shows that you always remember. There are days that you always remember. The first time that I met Jody, I always remember. I thought, what a wonderful thing to do. I can't imagine being a filmmaker and being a cinematographer and being somebody that has a gift to be able to see through the lens of humanity, the lens of joy, the lens of happiness, the lens of magic, and to be able to create a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful peace that will live on forever. There is nothing grander, nothing greater than the creation of life. And I think this is just such a beautiful and special and exceptional talent. And I think it's a great lesson for all of us as we have our cell phones, <laughs> as we are videoing our life and our blogs and our podcasts and our FaceTimes and our YouTubes and our Instagrams and all of the things that we are doing right now in today's world. And as we are transparent and revealing the who we are. And if we can share with as much honesty as Jody shares, which is much trust do you know what it takes to trust someone to film a baby being born? If we trust that those moments in life are gifts, that those moments in life that we share with the world are beautiful and profound and something that really is magical and glorious and blossoming 
and blooming and about as special as anything that you've ever seen than every moment you film on your phone can be a slice of life, a slice of joy, a slice of happiness. And those moments are what we indeed call living and leading an unlimited life. And so I thank Joni Myers for being with us and sharing her incredible will and her incredible talent and her incredible journey with all of us. And I thank you for being with us today and for really honoring those moments in life that are the moments that tie us together as a humanity, as a one people, as a one world, as we are all born and we all honor the birth of every new idea, every flower, every child, and everything that has a life on this planet. So join us again to learn more tools, more secrets, more keys, more windows, and more doorways to leading and to living an unlimited life. Look for the beauty in everything. See every birth and every seed as a blossoming of something wonderful in your life. And we look forward to seeing you here again. Follow us on our other podcasts at Dream Life on our social media, at Instagram, on Facebook, on YouTube. We would love to know your thoughts, and we would love to know how you are leading and living your very own unlimited life.